During the week, they're dressed in business clothes, working in fields like marketing or real estate sales. In Japan, they're known as salarymen. But when the weekend rolls around, it's a good thing their suits have a bit of stretch because what they're doing is nothing short of acrobatic. There are about 30 young businessmen here who didn't want their cheerleading work to end when they graduated college. So they formed a new squad in 2023 that spends weekdays working in rehearsing and weekends performing at malls and other places where there's a crowd. One of the men, a 23-year-old software developer, says cheerleading benefits his mental health. According to Reuters News, they did compete in Britain's Got Talent, coming in third place, and they have been featured in a commercial for the flexible suits they wear. A co-founder of the group says the outfits are a good contrast to the expressions that come out through their performances. Hey, it's great to see you this Wednesday. I'm Carl Azus, and this is The World From A To Z. Next up, American government officials are taking new steps to decrease the use of fluoride. Following Utah's ban on the mineral in its drinking water earlier this year, Florida has moved to do the same thing. And at the federal level, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration is asking manufacturers of ingestible fluoride supplements to stop making them. This doesn't include what you brush or rinse with or what dentists use. Ingestible fluoride is the kind that's swallowed in lozenges and tablets and fluoride drops for infants, according to the Associated Press. It's sometimes prescribed to prevent cavities and tooth decay in kids, but the FDA says it's never approved ingestible fluoride, that swallowing it's been shown to alter gut health, and that there are concerns that ingesting excessive fluoride can lower children's IQ. Those concerns are supported by studies in other countries, including Canada. Fluoride in general has been shown to strengthen teeth and repair them from everyday use, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. And in the past, the American Dental Association has recommended fluoride supplements for kids and teens who it says are at high risk for cavities. This may include children whose drinking water isn't fluoridated. The FDA says the best way to prevent cavities is to have good dental hygiene and avoid too much sugar. Some dentists who want fluoride supplements to stay available say parents should choose whether or not to give it to kids. Meanwhile, the government may soon recommend the removal of fluoride from drinking water nationwide. Upward and out. What astronomer first identified Jupiter's largest moons? Galileo, Marius, Copernicus, Kepler. Though Marius and Kepler later named the biggest moons of Jupiter, the first astronomer to identify them as moons was Galileo. Newly released images from NASA give a stunningly detailed look at swirling, turbulent auroras on our solar system's largest planet. Captured by the intrepid James Webb Space Telescope, the newly revealed images highlight an active auroral region on Jupiter, more intense and hundreds of times brighter than the ones seen on Earth. Auroras occur when high-energy particles from space collide with atoms of gas in the atmosphere, triggering a luminous light show. Researchers say they expected the Jupiter Jupiter auroras to fade in and out slowly, but instead describe them as fizzing, popping with light, and varying by the second. NASA says this observed variability will help scientists better understand how Jupiter's atmosphere works. And from a phenomenon millions of miles away, to one at the bottom of the ocean, where deep sea explorers say they witnessed the tail end of an underwater volcanic eruption. It may not look like much, but that's the point. Researchers diving in a submersible said just a day earlier this same spot was teeming with underwater flora and fauna, but when they returned, nearly the whole area had been entombed by dark volcanic rock, highlighted only by occasional glinting flashes of lava in the water. They believe the nearby Taika hydrothermal vent was the source, and experts say this was the first time an active eruption had been witnessed in the Mid-Ocean Ridge region. On this date in world history. On this date in 1607, English colonists established their country's first permanent settlement in the New World. James Fort would later be named Jamestown after King James I. On May 14, 1948, 
Israel declared its independence after British forces withdrew from Palestine. This established the first Jewish country in 2000 years, but led to the 1948 Arab-Israeli war when five neighboring countries invaded. Israel sees this as its war of independence. Arabs see it as the catastrophe because of the displacement of many Palestinians. And America's first space station launched on May 14th in 1973. Skylab was a $2.2 billion program that hosted hundreds of experiments and proved people could live and work in space. But it ended early after the spacecraft's orbital altitude dropped and what was left of Skylab crashed back to Earth in Western Australia and the Indian Ocean. No one was hurt. Where in the world? You'll find this place in Northern Europe. It's a nation of tens of thousands of lakes. It's also located between the North and Baltic seas. Its capital is Stockholm. This is Sweden, a sparsely populated country of more than 10.5 million. People in Sweden can now get around using the nation's newest public transport system, a hydrofoil ferry. After rigorous testing, the flying ferry is now open to the public. But while the vessel may be brand new, hydrofoils are not. They've been a part of the boating world for over a century. Hydrofoils basically function like an airplane wing underwater. The angle of the blade cuts through water, pushing it underneath the blade creating lift and raising the boat up and out of the water. And with just the hydrofoil wings powering through the water and not the entire boat, vessels can move faster and with greater energy efficiency, as that lift effect reduces drag by keeping the hull of the boat from dragging against the water. So I usually take the regular boat, so um, this is, a, is an opportunity for me to get to my job quicker and uh, actually more convenient also, it's fantastic. Early designs for hydrofoils had U-shaped blades that just pierced the water's surface. But those models were a bit unstable. The hydrofoil would often pop out of the water when boats braved bigger waves and wakes. Eventually, that design was surpassed by fully submerged hydrofoils like this. These hydrofoils have their benefits. The T-shaped blade never pops out of the water, which allows the boat to glide over wakes better, ensuring a smoother ride. But the new models like Candela's vessel still have their challenges. Traveling shallow waters is a no-go because it can damage the submerged foils. And hydrofoil vessels must reach high speeds for the boat to actually lift out of the water. And if the boat can't generate enough speed to lift a heavy load of passengers, hydrofoils will actually increase drag slowing the boat and reducing fuel efficiency. For now, this is the only hydrofoil being opened for public transport in Sweden. Candela hopes to expand its technology on an international scale soon. In the eastern part of the Empire State, there's a group of Spartans watching from the community of Burnt Hills. We're talking about Richard O'Rourke Middle School, where Mr. Tolan's class joins us from New York. Moving southwest to the bluegrass state of Kentucky, we come to Wagoner High School. It's in Louisville, and it's where Miss Kate's class is online. And walking west brings us to Waukee. It's a city in the Hawkeye state of Iowa, and it's Mr. Breeze's class we're spotlighting at Trail Ridge Middle School. We've had a series of reports lately about animals near busy highways. Here's another. A trooper in Washington state recently stepped in to get a family of ducks out of harm's way. Mama duck flew to a different spot when the trooper and a Department of Transportation worker approached, and the babies weren't happy about it. But after handling them with care on a storage bin lid, the two officials were able to reunite the family in an area with less traffic. The state state patrol said sometimes you need a little help getting your ducks in a row. Oh, they had to work quackly, get crowned to business, keep a golden eye on the littles, keep their emotions modeled up, hightail their efforts for those mandarin trouble, and wing it so as not to get aflac for ducking out of assisting with a malady before getting canvas back to work. They made it look like duck soup without it becoming duck soup, and it all turned out just ducky. That's the world from A to Z. I'm Coral Azuz. We'll be back in the hunt for more news and puns tomorrow.